All right, kiddies, are we ready? All right. Good morning. How are we going? There's a there's a lot to there's a lot. I heard another voice. Oh, hello. <laughs> I heard a I heard a um. There's a lot to pray for. There's a lot of stuff's been happening over the last few days, especially in Israel. What's happened in Israel in the last 24 hours? That's um. Wow. I just we were um, driving back from Torma this morning and listening to it and um. And how the biblical prophecy is all coming to pass. It's just crazy, man. The time's coming now to the end. You know, and uh, especially when they just sign a peace treaty, and next thing you know, they're, they're bombing Israel. And uh, it's, yeah, we've been told not to worry about it. These things are going to happen. Jesus said wars and rumors of wars, you know, but take heart, he's already overcome the world. So that's a good thing, eh? Amen. So, but that wasn't the title of my message. I had a few titles of my um, communion message this morning. It was like unseparating love, unfailing love. And then I thought, no, oh, no, no. And then I just went, okay, the title of this morning's communion message is there is nothing that you can do. Now, this is what I mean by this. I'm going to go from Ephesians. I'm going to um, read from chapter 2, and we'll do a few verses, and I'm going to explain what I mean by that. Starting from verse one, we're going to read um like we're going to read ten verses. Okay, so I'll just get straight into it. Ephesians chapter two, verse one. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, I love that, excuse me, but God, who is rich in mercy, amen, because of his great love which he loved us, even when we're dead in trespasses, he made us alive. Together with Christ, by grace you have been saved and raised us up together and has made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. And I love this bit. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen. What is the difference between true Christianity and religion? The cross. What is the difference between man-made Christian religion and grace? What is the difference? The cross. We don't have to strive anymore. We don't have to struggle anymore. For our debt has been paid in full. Not from past. Because when you think about it, all the sin that we were ever committed was after the cross. Yeah. You know, everybody in the Old Testament looked towards the cross, the coming of our Savior and the cross. We can look back to the cross and say, it's been completed, it's done. It breaks my heart to see Christians struggle so much trying to please God by works. We were created for good works, but the good works is the fruit of our faith and trust in what Christ did for us on the cross. And obedience comes into that. We don't try to be obedient to please God as a religious duty. Obedience is the fruit of what we believe Christ did for us. That's the fruit of it. Obedience is the fruit. And we're not perfect in that. I'm not perfect in that. I, you know, Anyone who knows me knows I fall down and I stumble and you know, just as much as anyone else. So I don't get up here to claim that I'm perfect and I've got everything all sorted because I don't. But the thing that I trust on and I'm desperate for is to know deeper and deeper of what Christ and the price that he paid on the cross. 
He took our sicknesses and he took our diseases, it says in Matthew. He took our sins and he made us whole again. The biggest lie the enemy is going to ever tell you is that you're not complete in Christ and you have to do things and you have to do works to do that, to make him happy. No, let me tell you something, church, and this is a biblical fact. If you put your faith and trust what Christ did on the cross for you, then you are now, according to Colossians, perfect and complete in Christ. You may struggle, you will fall down, you will sin, you'll go off the tracks, you will wander. But like you've heard me preach so many times when I get up here, and it's the passion of my heart that you are secure in his hand and no one can separate you from that. So church, we need to start realizing our, our true identity and our true position in Christ, past the cross. It's not of works. We were created for good works, but we're not created for works for salvation. We, if, if we're saved by works, we're only saved by one person's works, and that was Christ and Christ alone. He lived. He was the perfect sacrifice. He was the lamb without spot or blemish. And all our sin was transferred to him on the cross. But like I said in the message a couple of weeks ago in 2 Corinthians um, 5, uh, 17, I think it was, a uh, text, it says that he who made him who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteous of God through Christ yeah. Jesus. Church, it's time to stop striving. Yeah. It's, it's, it's time to start resting right. and believing and believing what he's done. That's what grace is, is resting. We don't become lazy, you know that. But what I'm saying is that when we rest in what, the finished work of the cross, our identity, our true identity is revealed. And that's when we start walking in victory. And that's when we start walking in the full promises because we don't have to try and receive from the Father. He's already given it to us. You know, we, it says in Ephesians, we are seated in heavenly places already. We are now, in, you know. And one day we will get to see Jesus face to face. But here on this earth, in Christ, we are seated in heavenly places. It's all being done. And it's all what he did for us on the cross. The cross is not just complete forgiveness of sins. That's part of it and that is crucial for our salvation. Amen? That's the foundation. But all the promises we have in Christ now are yes and amen. And we cannot ever walk in those promises of God if we don't accept what he did for us on the cross and have faith, complete, 100, total reliance of what he did. That's what separates us from religion. All religions of the world, and even a lot in the churches today, get you to perform, 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 trying to make God please you. Or, you know, you Eastern religions, you know, transcendental mentation and all these things, you know, or, or do some journey with Islam or whatever, you know, you do that walk what they do. You know, all the, fulfill all the steps. In Christ, he did it because we couldn't. That's Christianity. That is freedom. And that is love, undeniable love. So let's take our emblems and let's remember what he did. Lord, as we come this morning, Father, we just ask you, Lord, please forgive us. For when we fall short of your glory and we and when we sin, Lord, I, I know myself, Lord, I, I struggle and I, I'm being honest, Lord, I just, I'm not perfect, but you've made me perfect in Christ, and I believe that, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that your body was whipped, it was scored, it was it was stripped and painfully, Lord, for our salvation for our healing, Lord God. You just you paid the price so that we may become whole. My, you know, spirit, body, and soul, Lord God. And we thank you for that. So as we take this bread, we remember the sacrifice that you made for us. In Jesus' name we thank you. And Lord, we come as we drink. Lord, this juice, it represents the blood of the covenant, the new covenant. Lord, no longer it's, it's the blood of bulls and goats, but it's the blood of the spotless lamb, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who paid the price once and for all.
Never again, Lord, do we have to strive and struggle about our assurance of salvation because if you completed it, then you've completed it and it's done. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, when we do fall short. And we thank you, Lord, that when we do, we have a mediator between God and man. The advocate, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and we thank you, Lord. And we remember this and we drink in remembrance of you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen.